Here's more research on eggs and heart health. Researchers followed about 34,000 people in China from three cohorts for a median of 11.7 years. Their diet and lifestyle information was collected at baseline and the diet data was updated two to three times throughout the follow-up period. This is important because most other cohorts investigating egg consumption and cardiovascular disease risk, which I've discussed in a previous video, only assessed dietary intake at baseline so they couldn't track changes in intake over time. And another thing this newer study did was evaluate the participants' genetic risk of developing coronary artery disease based on 540 genetic variants. Using that information, they divided them into a low to intermediate genetic risk group and a high genetic risk group to see if their genetics impacted the association between egg consumption and coronary artery disease. Overall, those eating 10 or more eggs a week had a 42% higher risk of coronary artery disease compared to those consuming less than one egg a week. But there were differences based on genetics. Amongst those with a high genetic risk, consuming 10 or more eggs a week was associated with a 91% higher risk of coronary artery disease, while the result for those at low to intermediate genetic risk was more modest and was not statistically significant. However, the dose-response analysis suggested that for each additional three eggs consumed per week, there was a 5% increase in risk for those at low to intermediate genetic risk and a 10% increase in risk for those at high genetic risk. And both results were statistically significant. And when they considered changes in egg intake over time, because remember they did track that, the associations were greater. So in that analysis, in those with low to intermediate genetic risk, each three eggs consumed per week was associated with an 8% increase in risk, whereas in those with high genetic risk, each three eggs consumed per week was associated with a 15% higher risk. This is a critical point because critics of observational research often point to inaccuracies in data collection as a reason to dismiss observational research. However, when you use more accurate measures of dietary intake, the associations typically strengthen, they don't weaken. So if anything, we typically underestimate the risks of these foods, not overestimate them. Nonetheless, one limitation of this research is they didn't consider what eggs were replacing in the diet, and previous research suggests that replacing meat with eggs is beneficial, but replacing plants with eggs is generally more harmful.